Hi, this is your Sapnil Bharatiya and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us once again, Katie Stewart, Vice President of Dependable Embedded Systems at the Linux Foundation. Katie, it's great to have you back on the show. Thank you very much. It's good to be back. Yeah, and you folks recently had your annual Zephyr Developer Summit in Prague, Czech Republic. Um, uh, I would love to hear a bit about uh, this uh, event. Uh, what kind of audience was there and also uh, what kind of discussions, you know, of course, there were a lot of sessions, but when you go out and walk and talk to people, what kind of like theme or discussions you were hearing this time? This Zephyr Developer Summit is aimed at developers. And this year we um, paired up with the Embedded Linux conference folk. And so it was very much embedded. It was the main theme for this conference, embedded developer work. So we had over 800 um, people showing up in person. And then I'm still trying to figure out the stats for how many were showing up virtually, but we had a fairly good, fairly good virtual presence as well. And what it was is, was of trying to bring these communities together to talk about common problems because both Zephyr and the Linux kernel use the device tree and they use kconfig. And so some of that infrastructure is common between Linux and between Zephyr and getting it so that the developers can meet and talk um, will hopefully move things forward faster. Like I say, it was a very um, active event and we had pretty full hallways. Like I say, we all, we effectively sold out. Uh, we only had a capacity for 800. I think we had 830 people registered. So you know, we're kind of, you know, it was, it was exciting to see all those um, embedded folk together and getting together and just sort of talking about, um, you know, common problems. Um, it made some people take another look at Zephyr, which was one of my goals. Um, and so there was a lot of interest in that. And we had our kites, finally. We had our kites. But like, you know, this is something that we've wanted to see right since the start of the project. We actually had kites made up and available that have Zephyr on it. And those were very popular with the attendees. So you saw a lot of people walking around with the kites sticking out of their backpack. Can you talk about what are some of the kind of highlights? And also, as I asked, you know, what, what were some of the themes that you kept hearing when you're talking to, uh, I mean, of course, as you said, the focus was more on developers. Was it more like they, 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 they all know about Zephyr, they are using it Zephyr, and they were talking about the production level problem? Or you think that it was more focused on, hey, why is it, how we can use it uh, in, in, in kind of association with Linux? What kind of discussions were there? It has shifted from the what is it to how to use it. It really had done that shift that we were looking for. Um, we found about, uh, I guess what, three new products while we were there. People came and told us about three more products. Um, and they're now up on our product page. So, uh, Vestas wind turbines are public now using Zephyr. So these huge wind turbines from Vestas, they've got Zephyr inside. Um, the other ones is Seed. Uh, Seed was there as a sponsor. And so, um, they've got a couple of new devices that, they are running Zephyr and they've got them, we've got them up on the page as well. And so you're starting to see that, like I say, we just recently got Arduino in as a member for the project. And so they've got a large ecosystem and they're starting to use Zephyr extensively. And we've also, um, you know, we're seeing um, like analog devices just joined our board for the project. And so they're moving strategically in the direction of Zephyr. So there was a lot of people um, talking there, and we've, we're seeing more and more products showing up with Zephyr, which is exciting, because you know I like to have a new product each time I talk to you, and this time there was no no shortage of that. The one I'm most excited about is the, is the is the wind turbine, but we've also got like um, the Wio terminal from Seed, and then the SenseCap S210 sensor builder is sitting there from Seed as well. Both of those are running Zephyr today, and so you know. Um, we also had like the track solar, which we learned about at Embedded World. Um, they've got we've got that one up now on our site. So as we get more and more of these products, it's just fun to watch them go. But the wind turbine ones we've sort of known about behind the scenes for a long time, a um, couple of years now, and it's nice to finally be able to be visible about it. There's a few more out there that um, uh, we know about, and we're waiting for you know the appropriate marketing people at these companies to sign off on things being visible. Um, Google was very present there. Um, and was showing us four of the Chromebooks that are out there uh, as part of their keynote that are using Zephyr already in their firmware for the EC units. Um, and then we also, one of the you know inspiring talks from my perspective was the one from Ernas and um, how they're using Zephyr as an implantable in rhino horns for tracking poachers and um, helping with wildlife conservation. And since I like to take photography, like I like to take pictures of wildlife, and that's my hobby, uh, that we're doing things to help preserve um, the uh, 
rhinos and stop them from getting quite so endangered and catching the poachers is a good thing in my mind. <laughs> but we, we still we still see stuff for a lot of the trackers. Yeah, we see in a lot of the trackers and all the, um, you know, there's more and more um, type of tracking applications showing up. Uh, one of the ones is tracking your cat, tracking your dog as they wander through the neighborhood with a little cat, little dog. We learned that about that one from Europe and they let us post about their project product. And so there's, you know, I don't know if you've got any pets or not, but if you do and the pets go outside, being able to put these sort of trackers on and understand where they might be in the neighborhood um, is probably a good thing. Uh, so she who has walked around her neighborhood um, a few times looking for her dog that bolted out of a car when it was being scared or something like that. So having to start to, you know, use the tracking technology in the home uh, for like your pets is kind of a cool evolution too. Do you also see that Zephyr is also uh, finding its way in the consumer space because uh, you know, Adafruit is there, of course, Jade is there, so many other companies are there. Uh, or you feel that it still is specific to some of the industrial use cases? It actually is making, it's been sort of in the consumer space for a bit. Um, and like I say, that little dog, little cat tracker, that's definitely a consumer product. Um, the hearing aids are consumer products. <laughs> And we've had them visible for quite a while now from Oticon. So all their hearing aids are coming out with Zephyr inside. Um, we've, we're seeing, uh, there's a couple more that I know about. They're very much consumer hardware, like, you know, hardware store products. But we don't have, um, you know, permissions yet to talk about them. Uh, so I'm hoping that they'll become more visible in the days to come. But yeah, any, team, any place you need power? to be conserved in your resource constraints efforts a pretty good solution. Um, you know, that, that rhino implant is there for two years. Okay. It's kind of how long it's, it, they've, they're trying to have the battery life lasting for. And they only did. So these are the sort of, um, it's those long battery life scenarios that where Zephyr is really adding advantage right now. And as you mentioned earlier, analog devices, but uh, if I'm not wrong, Arduino as well as Technology Innovation Institute, they have also joined the project. Uh, talk a bit about, uh, once again, what is driving this adoption as side of? What's driving adoption, I think, is at this point in time is a factor of the functionality and that you have everything all there already pre-integrated. And so you're not trying to bolt things together randomly ad hoc on your own. Um, you, have a, you have a set of a fairly complete stack sitting there already pre-integrated and you can build from. You also have a very wide community now. Um, we've got over 1,800 contributors into the repo. We are adding on average um, about, you know, a, a third of our each releases contributors now are coming in and they are new. Um, we're sort of sitting at about two commits an hour and there's about, you know, 250 uh, people a month participating on the repo. And so Colonel's nine commits an hour, Zephyr's two commits an hour. We're now, I guess, one of the six most active projects at the Linux Foundation, actually, um, which is, you know, for an embedded project, it's pretty cool. When you attend this event, um, what kind of progress, what kind of curve you're seeing for the project? Let's just talk about in this year where you see, hey, this is where we're heading. Like you say, it's, you know, when you're up and to the right, pretty much on our on our on our um, in terms of the commits, in terms of the uh, contributors, I think like say we're over 1,800 now into the repo. And I'm sure the numbers are stale because I haven't looked at it for two weeks, <laughs> courtesy of the event. Um, but um, people are bringing in, you know, it, they've got a lot there, and they just need that extra little bit that they want to put in for their own specific needs, and Zephyr's you know suiting that fairly well for them. And we've just finished coming out with the latest release, uh, the 3.4 release. And there was a lot of new technologies in there. Um, May can provide a link to the um, our blog post that goes through some highlights of it all and goes through more details. Almost there, but we're, we're like I say, we see new technologies showing up, you know, pretty much every week, every other week. And then when the releases are coming out, being having to have this all integrated, tested, and well formed is important. Right now, we're, um, you know lining up for the next LTS, and we'll be having the next LTS next year. And in parallel, we're very active on the safety um, committee side, trying to get everything uh, ready to go after um, some safety certifications with that LTS when it comes out. So these things are all moving forward. And, you know, um, 
getting more people engaged who care about this is something I'd say watch this space. You may hear another, a little, another couple more of our members in the next in the next few months. First of all, uh, you wear so many hats at the foundation. Of course, we talk about SPDX and s bonds and all those things. And we have also talked about Zephyr security in past as well. Talk a bit about was there any focus on security or were there any sessions which focused on security or when you're talking with developers, the, the topic of security was coming up uh, once in a while. Security continues to be a primary focus for Zephyr and um, its ability to generate out software materials was uh, one of the topics of discussions um, in the hall, certainly at the conference, as well as at the Zen Summit, actually. Um, so the fact that we can have that S bombs generated out automatically out of Zephyr with just changing, you know, one line, one command line change, and you suddenly have these S bombs, um, is making it is making Zephyr very interesting to certain people that are trying to work with the federal government and like things like the FDA. Because the FDA is not going to be looking at products. Um, they're going to refuse to um, consider type of products if they don't have S-bombs as of October. And so um, medical devices and things in that space are sort of taking the lead on trying to make sure that this type of information is available. Um, but Zephyr itself is actually looking at going after some of the safety certifications that are out there. And so there's work going on in uh, the working group uh, talking about this and we had a joint session with Flavio and David at the, e at the Embedded Zephyr Developer Summit at EOS, Embedded Open Source Summit, um, talking about the directions for the safety community, for the safety teams. And so um, one of the things that would be, you know, one of the things that the project does offer is if you do have a product out there today and um, you want to get access to the vulnerabilities under embargo, um, you know, Feel free. It's free to sign up. If you've got a product in the field and you can point us to it, then you can say that it's running Zephyr. Uh, we will certainly um, be willing to add you onto that list and uh, make that available because we want to make sure that we do have responsible disclosure and interaction with the community effectively. We're also sort of looking at seeing if we can get another audit done for the project. Um, we had one a few years ago and we're, sort of, we're investigating, seeing if we can um, find, get basically enough funds secured so that we can go after another audit um, because they're not cheap um, and just basically make sure that nothing has shifted too badly or, you know, there's no surprises lurking for us. But we see about like maybe one or two vulnerabilities, but maybe like, you know, every, every other month or so. Um, so we're not seeing a lot of rate of it coming in. On the other hand, having a deep dive on some of the newer stuff that's come into the code is definitely something the project, the security teams of the project are interested in. Kate, thank you so much for taking time out today and give us an update, of course, on the event and uh, the growth of the project. And it's really good to see how it's growing. Uh, so thanks for that. And I'm pretty sure that uh, we'll be talking soon. As you said, there are some, some new, <laughs> which you cannot talk about yet. Uh, so uh, I look forward to our next discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for the interest. I much appreciate it. Good to talk to you again.